image like no other, inspiring decades of research and debate, the Shroud of Turin, that's a piece of history. What if I told you that one piece of ancient cloth might hold the greatest secret in human history? Not a golden artifact, not a jewel encrusted relic, just a strip of linen, scarred, stained, and silent. Yet this ordinary fabric has fueled centuries of obsession, ignited wars between science and faith, and left even the most brilliant minds grasping for answers. It is called the Shroud of Turin, and for over 600 years it has dared humanity to answer one question, what if it's real? The image is faint, almost ghostly. At first glance it looks like nothing more than aged fibers, smudged by time. But under the right light, under the right lens, a face emerges. A body, wounded, pierced, a figure that bears the unmistakable signs of crucifixion. For millions, this isn't just a man, it's Jesus of Nazareth. And yet, this is where the story begins to twist. Because the Shroud doesn't just ask for belief, it demands evidence. It invites scrutiny. And the deeper scientists dig, the stranger it gets. Think about this. The cloth contains real human blood, traced and confirmed. The anatomical details match Roman crucifixion, down to wounds in the wrists, not the palms, something medieval artists rarely depicted. Pollen embedded in the fibers, from plants found only in the Middle East. Sounds convincing, right? But then comes the blow that almost buried the mystery forever, carbon dating. In 1988, three world-class laboratories tested the cloth. Their verdict? The linen dates to the Middle Ages between 1260 and 1390 AD. Case closed, or so it seemed. Except Beusaisus. The story didn't end there. Almost immediately, whispers of doubt spread. Was the tested sample taken from a repaired corner? Threads added centuries later after fire damage? Could the results have been skewed? Decades later, cutting-edge tests suggest the shroud may be far older than anyone thought, possibly from the first century. And then came something no one expected. Artificial intelligence. Today, as advanced AI decodes every pixel of this mysterious fabric, it's revealing details that feel almost otherworldly. From ultra-realistic faces to simulations hinting at bursts of energy beyond the limits of physics, the Shroud is forcing us to rethink everything we thought we knew about history, science, and maybe even resurrection itself. This isn't just about faith or skepticism, it's about an object that refuses to be explained, even in an age where nothing seems unknowable. Why does the image behave like a photographic negative centuries before photography existed? Why has no artist, ancient or modern, been able to replicate it? And why, after hundreds of experiments, do we still not know how it was made? As the world stands at the crossroads of technology and theology, one question echoes louder than ever. What really happened in that tomb 2,000 years ago? Stay with me, because in this video, we're diving into the full story. How an unremarkable cloth turned into Christianity's most studied artifact. Why decades of scientific tests have only deepened the mystery. And how artificial intelligence, the most advanced tool of our time, may be the key to unlocking its secrets. Or proving that some mysteries were never meant to be solved. This is the story of the Shroud of Turin. A relic that refuses to fade. A question that refuses to die. And a mystery that might just change the way you see everything. The Shroud of Turin didn't enter history with a blinding light or angelic proclamation. It slipped quietly into the world, wrapped in silence, shrouded in mystery. The first time it appeared in the historical record was the 14th century, in a small French town called Leary. A local knight, Geoffrey de Charny, claimed to possess something extraordinary, the burial cloth of Jesus Christ. No one could explain where it came from or how it survived. It had no royal seals, no sacred documentation. Only a man's word and a piece of linen scarred with an image that defied reason. The church approached it with caution. They didn't condemn it, but neither did they declare it authentic. For centuries, the shroud lived in this limbo, adored by some, dismissed by others. Pilgrims came to see it, scholars came to study it, but the truth remained out of reach. And then, in 1898, everything changed. An Italian lawyer named Secondo Pia set up his camera to photograph the shroud during an exhibition. He developed the negatives late at night in his darkroom and froze. What stared back at him was not what he expected. On the negative, the image of the man on the shroud became startlingly clear, more detailed, more lifelike than the original cloth. The ghostly markings transformed into a face, a body, a haunting portrait of suffering. 
The news spread like wildfire. Newspapers ran headlines calling it a miracle. Scientists called it an anomaly. For the first time, the shroud wasn't just an artifact. It was an enigma, an image that acted like a photographic negative centuries before photography was even invented. But this was only the beginning. As decades rolled on, researchers examined every inch of the linen. They discovered no signs of paint, no pigments, no brush strokes. The image wasn't embedded in the fibers. It hovered on the surface, so thin it barely penetrated the threads. Microscopic analysis revealed something else. Traces of pollen. Not from Europe, but from plants native to the Middle East. Some species grow only in the region around Jerusalem. The intrigue deepened when blood tests confirmed the stains were real human blood, specifically type AB, a rare group even today. And these weren't random smears. The patterns aligned with the wounds described in the Gospels. Pierced wrists and feet, a gash on the side, blood flow around the scalp as if from a crown of thorns. For believers, the evidence was overwhelming. For skeptics, it was troubling. How could a medieval artist reproduce details unknown in the art of his time? Why depict nails through the wrists when every crucifix of that era showed them through the palms? And why was the image anatomically flawless, something most medieval painters could never achieve? But then came the turning point, the blow that nearly shattered centuries of devotion, 1988. Three leading laboratories, Oxford, Zurich, and Arizona, conducted radiocarbon dating on samples from the shroud. The results seemed conclusive. The linen dated between 1260 and 1390 AD. For many, that was the end of the mystery. The shroud wasn't ancient. It was medieval, a brilliant forgery. Headlines screamed, shroud exposed as fake. Museums and academics declared the case closed. Skeptics celebrated. Believers mourned. But the shroud wasn't finished. Almost immediately, challenges arose. Textile experts noticed something strange. The section tested for carbon dating wasn't representative of the whole cloth. It appeared to contain cotton fibers, possibly added during medieval repairs after fire damage in 1532. If true, the sample could have skewed the entire result. From that moment, the debate roared back to life. New studies suggested the original linen could indeed be much older. And as the 21st century dawned, Technology offered tools beyond the wildest dreams of 14th century artisans. Scanning electron microscopes, spectral imaging, chemical analysis, each probe raised new questions instead of answers. And so, the shroud endured. Surviving fires, wars, skepticism, and science. Still intact, still staring back at us with that silent, haunting face. But here's the truth. The real storm was yet to come, because the next chapter in this saga would take us far beyond the realms of history or theology. It would pull the shroud into a world no one imagined, a world of algorithms, neural networks, and artificial intelligence. And what AI would reveal would shock everyone. For centuries, the Shroud of Turin defied explanation, surviving every assault from both skeptics and scientists. But no one expected the next chapter in this ancient saga to be written not by archaeologists, theologians, or even historians, but by machines, artificial intelligence. A tool built for the digital age, now staring straight into the face of one of history's greatest enigmas. It started quietly, just a simple experiment. High-resolution scans of the shroud were uploaded into an AI image generation platform. The instructions were clear, reconstruct the man behind the cloth. No divine assumptions, no miracles, just data. What happened next was unlike anything anyone imagined. As the algorithms processed millions of microscopic details, the light patterns, the fiber shadows, the faint contours hidden in the cloth, the screen began to form an image, not a glowing icon, not the stylized Jesus of Renaissance paintings, but a face, raw, human, and startlingly real. A rugged Middle Eastern man with olive-toned skin, a thick beard, blood-matted hair, and deep-set eyes that seemed to hold both agony and peace. No soft halos, no golden light, just a bruised, battered man. A man who looked like he had endured torture. And then came the shock. Anthropologists compared the AI-generated image with forensic reconstructions of first-century Jewish males. The resemblance was uncanny. The proportions matched. The bone structure fit. Even the injuries aligned perfectly with Roman crucifixion practices. Social media erupted. Hashtags like at AI Jesus and Shroud Decoded trended worldwide. Some called it a miracle rendered in pixels. Others dismissed it as a parlor trick. 
warning that AI is trained on billions of images, many of them religious art. But here's the twist. This wasn't just the AI making something up. The visual cues came directly from the shroud's own data. Every mark, every stain, every nuance of the linen guided the reconstruction. In other words, the image wasn't fantasy, it was extrapolation, and people weren't prepared for what it suggested. Because as more prompts were fed into the system, referencing bloodstains, scorch marks, and the mysterious negative effect, the AI began generating something even more provocative, a body that appeared to hover above the cloth, glowing with light. It wasn't programmed to symbolize resurrection. It was simply trying to visualize how such an image could have formed if energy, not pressure, created the imprint. Rays of illumination radiated where blood once touched the linen. The figure looked weightless, as if the cloth had captured not decay, but transformation. Those images spread like wildfire, sparking fierce debates. Some headlines asked, did AI just show us resurrection? Others scoffed, a digital illusion, nothing more. Critics reminded everyone that AI isn't divine, it's predictive. It builds from data and bias. And they're right. The program has no faith, no theology. But here's the unsettling part. If bias shaped the output, why didn't the face look like the European Jesus we see in stained glass and Renaissance art? Why did it look historically accurate? Why did it resemble the forensic models of men from first century Judea? Coincidence, maybe. Or maybe the shroud contains more encoded truth than anyone ever imagined. For believers, the AI experiment felt like a modern echo of faith, a silent witness from antiquity speaking through the most advanced technology of our time. For skeptics, it was a reminder that questions remain, questions too stubborn for easy answers. And so the mystery deepens. Because if AI, armed with the world's most powerful algorithms, can't debunk the shroud, but only magnify its enigma, what does that say about the cloth? About us? One researcher summed it up perfectly. If this is a forgery, it's the most sophisticated forgery in human history. And we still don't know how it was made. After billions of computations, thousands of simulations, and a wave of viral images, the shroud remains what it has always been, a paradox, a relic that refuses to settle the debate, but refuses to be ignored. And yet, behind all the controversy, one haunting question lingers. What if this really is the face of the man who changed history? Because if so, then the shroud isn't just cloth, it's a photograph of eternity. What happens when science collides with something it can't explain? When algorithms designed to decode patterns stumble into the possibility of the miraculous. For centuries, the Shroud of Turin has hovered between two worlds, faith and skepticism, devotion and doubt. But the rise of AI has pushed the debate into a new dimension. And now, one question burns brighter than ever. Could this cloth be proof? Not of art, not of legend, but of resurrection. It's the theory that refuses to die. For decades, physicists and image specialists have proposed what they call the radiation burst hypothesis. The idea is simple, yet staggering. The image on the shroud was not painted, not burned, but imprinted by an intense flash of energy. Something so powerful, it encoded three-dimensional information without scorching the fibers. One study estimated that creating such an imprint would require several billion watts of ultraviolet light released in a fraction of a second. Let that sink in. That's not something from medieval Europe. That's not something from any known natural event. That's something beyond our experience of physics. Something that sounds eerily like the biblical description of resurrection. An instant, transformative burst of glory. Of course, skeptics dismiss this as speculation. They argue that untestable theories are just dressed up theology. And maybe they're right. But here's the problem. Even with all our science, no one has ever reproduced the Shroud's image. Not in the 14th century, not in the 21st. And yet, this isn't just about technology or history anymore. It's about meaning. Because while AI can simulate faces and imagine radiant energy, it can't answer the question that matters most. Why does this image move us? Think about it. In a world obsessed with proof, progress, and pixels, this ancient linen has become a trending topic on TikTok, a viral conversation on Twitter, a subject of heated debate on YouTube. Why? Because deep down, people aren't just searching for facts, they're searching for hope. The shroud taps into something primal. It's not just a forensic puzzle, 
It's a symbol of suffering, a whisper of transcendence. In that faint outline, bloodied brow, pierced wrists, millions see a story bigger than themselves. And now, through AI, that story feels alive again. Imagine standing in the 2025 Vatican Digital Exhibition in Turin. Pilgrims and tourists file past a high-resolution display of the shroud. It's silent. No sermons. No explanations. Just linen and mystery. On the screens of their phones, they scroll through AI reconstructions. The bruised face, the calm expression, the eerie glow that seems to suggest light, not death, wrote this image. Some look skeptical, others weep quietly. Because for all the science, for all the algorithms, the shroud doesn't give us certainty. It gives us a choice, a choice to believe or not. And maybe that's the point. Maybe the greatest mystery isn't in the fibers of the cloth, but in us. In our hunger for meaning, in an age drowning in information, in our longing for something, someone, who can break through despair with the promise of life. Here's the truth. AI didn't solve the mystery. It deepened it. It made the shroud more present, more haunting, more real to a generation raised on screens. For believers, it feels like a bridge between faith and reason. For skeptics, it's an infuriating puzzle that refuses to collapse under scrutiny. And for everyone else, it's a question that echoes louder with every passing year. What if this isn't just an image of death, but a snapshot of eternity? After centuries of study, the Shroud of Turin remains an unanswered question. One of the few mysteries that grows deeper with every attempt to solve it. Carbon dating said medieval, but newer imaging techniques suggest a much older origin. Blood analysis points to real human wounds, while no known method has ever reproduced its image. And now, AI has entered the conversation, not to settle the debate, but to reopen it. From raw data, it produced a face that looks nothing like the European Jesus of art, but like a rugged Middle Eastern man marked by suffering. Was it truth or coincidence? Even AI cannot tell. What it did prove is this. The shroud still defies easy answers. Here's the reality. Science can measure fibers, map stains, and reconstruct images. What it can't measure is meaning. Why does this cloth still captivate the modern world? Why do millions lean in when technology tries to decode something wrapped in silence for centuries? Maybe because at its core this isn't about linen. It's about the possibility of something beyond ourselves. If the shroud is authentic, it captured a moment that rewrote history. The instant death gave way to life. And if it isn't, it still speaks to a universal hunger for hope. So what do we do with this? We ask the question no algorithm can answer. What if resurrection is real? If that thought unsettles you, good, it should. Because if this cloth witnessed the impossible, then everything changes, not just history, but our future. I'll leave it here. The shroud may never give us certainty, but maybe certainty isn't the point. Maybe its power is in the invitation to wonder, to question, to hope. Now it's your turn. What do you think? Is the shroud an elaborate forgery or the most important artifact in history? Could AI have brought us closer to truth or simply reminded us of mystery? Let me know in the comments. I'll be reading everyone. Because whether you believe or doubt, one thing is undeniable. This cloth refuses to be forgotten.